Yeah. So good morning to all. Uh, we're looking at the hydraulic turbines. In that, uh, specifically, today we discussed on uh, the Kapuan turbine and uh, draft loop. So construction wise also. Today, I will try to analyze uh, that uh, applying the Bernoulli equation. Now, before actually, we'll try to draw the simple uh, case of that uh, draft tube. Then we'll try to analyze. This is how the draft. This is how the draft. Tube. Okay. Let us try to draw this to construct the draft, tube, which is vertical. So this is my axis. So I'm going to draw a, a vertical draft. Rule can play for other types of a simple a conical tube, okay. So, which is diverging from a section to where I have the turbine here. And so, if I try to put a tail radius part uh, of the tail ray. Okay, this is the water. Then I am going to take some reference point. Okay, you see this is my uh, three three, which is the exit of your draft tube. So I am going to take some reference. So this is my reference point, and I am going to draw all the heights, all those things. So if I take the pressure at the exit of the turbine as P two. The pressure at the exit of the draft tube is P3. Okay, then let me find the R, write the height. This is H3. Okay, if all this as H, that is from your uh, the surface of your uh, tail raised to where exactly I'm going to say uh, keep my turbo. Okay. All this this. Uh, this will be my that from the that to that three P two P three all those things. So, so you're you not water. yeah. So you're not audible, sir. There's there's right. some disturbance in your voice. No disturbance is different. It's not an issue. No, sir. Your voice is breaking. I have to hear what you're telling. Abhimanyu, Abhimanyu, is part. Uh, your voice is breaking there, sir. Can someone? Uh, no, you, you, it's breaking, sir. What is the problem? I have. Can I also? Yeah. 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 Let me restart that particular thing. It shouldn't happen actually. Okay. Fine. What about now? Yes, sir. Now it's fine. Hello. Yeah, fine, fine. I restarted. Okay, fine. So I've written the draft to the right hand side with all the height, all those things and all. Now let us try to uh, apply the uh, Bernoulli's equation between the sections 2, 1, 3. Okay. Apply. Apply the Bernoulli's equation. Bernoulli's equation between the section two and three. So try to write it. So what does Bernoulli's equation? Mean? The total gradient almost remains same. It remains constant. So if I try to write p two y rho into g point two plus V2 over Y 2G. Sir, at the entry, if it is at the entry to the uh, draft tube, then P3 by rho into G plus V3 square by 2G plus Z3. This is at the exit plus some losses. 
Two that is frictional losses. This will be your losses. This is how I can apply my Bernoulli's equation. Now, if I call this as equation number one, and also if you look at it, what is the pressure at the three three section three three? It should be atmospheric. And also, your P three, whatever we have, that is P three by rho g is equal to your P atmospheric head. Have some losses there. So that is P atmospheric by rho g plus H3. So this is your P3 by rho g. Let me call that as equation number two. And also, if you uh, look into what is it? What is your H actually? H is the height of the height above the tail rays where your turbine is installed. Okay, H is the height above the tail rays where your turbine is installed. Now let us try to uh, apply this or uh, substitute this P3 by rho g in equation number one. If I do that, what will happen to your equation one? So substituting, substituting for P3 by rho g in equation one. So what I'm going to get actually the equation will be P2 by rho g plus Your v2 square 2g plus z2 is equal to p a by rho g plus h3 plus v3 square by 2g plus z3 plus your head loss due to friction. Now, what I'm going to do actually, if you closely look at it, I'm going to separate all those things. So, if I write p2 by rho g on one side. P2 by rho g is equal to so P a by rho g. Then I want to take this V2 to the right hand side. So this will become V2 square minus V3 square by 2g because I have taken minus outside. Minus of so this will be your Z2 minus Z3 minus H3. So this all combined together is your H. Plus your loss due to friction. Okay, if you look at it, your Z2 minus Z3, Z2 minus Z3 minus H3 is your H. What I have. So that is your head and turbine is placed above your tail rays. So now what I will write, I will modify this equation and write it as your P2 by rho g is equal to The your P atmospheric head that is P A by rho g minus of V2 square minus V3 square that is within the bracket divided by 2g 2g minus H plus head loss due to friction. So let's solve this as equation number three. Now if you look at it, what is this H H F actually? H F is nothing but it's the frictional losses. I can express this H as, in terms of kinetic energy loss, as V2 square minus V3 square by 2g. I can write that as V2 square minus V3 square by 2g into so that I can put it as with some multiplication factor from k. Okay, I can call that as that part is the head loss due to friction. It is V2 so so F can be expressed in terms of kinetic energy loss if that. If head loss due to friction is expressed in terms of kinetic energy losses, kinetic energy losses. Right. So it is approximate. That is approximately. This will be v two square minus v three square by two g. Okay, into some k. See, this is not. This is roughly so k into that particular thing. So k into that v2 square minus v3. Sorry, v2 square minus v3 square by 2g. So what it is actually? Then if I substitute this HF in equation three, if I substitute this equation, we uh, that is your uh, HF in terms of your kinetic energy in equation three. So what I'm going to get? I'm going to get P2 by 
रो जी इज इक्वल टू पी पी ए जी कैन कम एस वन माइनस के इन टू वी टू स्क्वायर माइनस वी थ्री स्क्वायर ओके बाय टू जी कैन कम बाय दस व्हाट इज इट एक्चुअली दिस इज योर वन माइनस के लुक एट दिस वन माइनस के इज नथिंग बट योर ड्राफ्ट ट्यूब एफिशिएंसी दैट इज वन माइनस के इज द ड्राफ्ट ट्यूब एफिशिएंसी what is it actually if my losses are less if this my losses are less that means if my losses are less if then your draft will be more efficient so that's what i'm going to write so lower the value of k lower the value of your k higher the the efficiency higher the efficiency that means your draft tube will be more efficient so ideally your draft tube will be around 90% or 95% efficient when it is newly installed so your losses come at around 4% or 5% as we use this draft tube over a period of time this efficiency the k value keeps on increasing and your draft tube efficiency may come to around 85% or 80% 75% so particular point when the efficiency goes particular uh, now we are so this is what a draft tube so here the most important thing is actually we are trying to express that particular thing in terms of kinetic energy because draft tube is used to convert your kinetic energy to your corresponding pressure head so higher the efficiency easily i am able to convert it but also here you have to very careful see v3 square the lower the number for v3 see suppose to enter at the end that the this particular point at this particular point if my velocity at the entry to be something for 5 or 6 meters per second at the exit lower the number better the conversion so if actually we speaking this should be zero but getting a zero value is very so lower the number higher the can i have the conversion rate so i have the conversion rate i have the conversion rate so that's how we are supposed to look into a draft tube okay so this draft tube is effectively draft tube is effectively used to recover your kinetic energy trying to draft tube to show you a similar analysis can be done for other type of draft tube whether it is a elbow draft tube or it is something like i have a draft tube a circle inlet at the maybe circle cross section at the inlet or a circular cross section at the inlet and i have a rectangular cross section at that whatever it may be your analysis depends on recovery of your kinetic energy okay so this is about your uh, draft tube and one important point what we have to look at is actually uh, we have studied uh, in, your, in your pump also uh, that is a cavitation so we need to look at a you know of cavitation in your turbine also see what is it actually see whenever your pressure at the exit of the turbine goes below the vapor pressure if pressure falls below the vapor pressure of that particular fluid here it is water so there is a formation of bubbles okay what will happen this bubbles will attach to the either your see here what will happen it will be attached to your draft tube it may attach to the, the casing of your turbine so when they attach so what will happen the fluid which is coming actually the fluid being a higher density this fluid will try to collapse this bubble and you can see a little bit of sound or overpeed of what will happen this bubbles they collapse and they start when collapsing they try to take a little bit of material along with them and the phenomena of breaking of this bubbles actually is called cavitation what we need to do here actually we should ensure that the pressure at the exit of the turbine never falls below the vapor pressure it never falls below the vapor pressure 
if we ensure that then cavitation can be minimized so it's very difficult to eliminate the cavitation but cavitation can be minimized okay what is it actually let me write that it is a phenomena so it is the phenomena of form of the bubbles so phenomena of form and of a bubble we can call it bubble simply at the exit or bar at the exit of the turbine okay when the pressure when the pressure falls below the the vapor pressure okay vapor pressure of the water vapor pressure of the water so water it may be can be that particular fluid here it is water so these bubbles what will happen these bubbles will this formed bubbles will attach the surface so what can be this surface so this can be surface of the casing or blade or to a draft tube whatever it may be your draft tube and or collapse okay when the stream of when the stream of fluid strikes them so this particular thing what we see is called as a cavitation and this cavitation this phenomena you can't eliminate it you can't eliminate this cavitation but what can be done is actually you can uh, always we can try to minimize this cavitation phenomena in your turbines so this is about your theoretical part of your hydraulic turbines what we are supposed to look into it. and uh, what i have done is i am going to Uh, in the uh, notes, I am going to give the difference in both the reaction turbine, which we already discussed. So that I have grouped in uh, in two. Go through that. That will be just sufficient actually. So what I am going to take is actually I am going to take up some numericals. Okay, and already I uploaded the tutorial sheet in the Google Classroom. Huh? You can go to that Google Classroom and. 25 numericals are there. We'll try to solve today, and I'm going to that I'm going to take one extra class sometime this week, and we'll try to uh, complete that uh, numericals part of it. So, let me take up the uh, the first numerical. This is on the Pelton wheel. Okay, it's something like this: a single jet impulse turbine of 10 megawatt capacity is to work under a head of 500 meters. If the specific speed is 10. the overall efficiency is around 80% and the coefficient of velocity is 0.98 find the the diameter of the jet and the bucket wheel assume the speed ratio to be 0.46 okay so let's try to write the data and try to solve it solution okay write the given data what is given or given or data so they have given the the power that is developed by it, it is 10 megawatts and it is a single jet turbine and the net head is 500 meter okay and the specific speed nsp it is actually for a turbine it is 10 the overall efficiency it is 80% the coefficient of velocity cv it is 0.98 and the speed ratio phi is equal to 0.46 okay what is it actually it is u by v1 that's the meaning of it so this being a water your specific weight is 9810 newton per meter cube this is the assumption what we are trying to make what we are supposed to find we are supposed to find the first thing the diameter of the jet we call it as small d the second one the diameter of the bucket or the wheel diameter of the jet and the bucket wheel or bucket diameter 
okay the wheel diameter okay let's try to solve one by one see uh, the overall efficiency is given by what is actually it is the shaft power available to the energy that is supplied are you getting the shaft power is p divided by the energy that is supplied is actually omega qh or gamma qh whatever it may be now they are given the overall efficiency as 0.8 is equal to your power is 10 into 10 to the power of 6 divided by omega is 9810 q i don't know q i need to calculate and 500 is a net head so be careful whenever you are substituting omega qh h should be always net head it should not be gross head if there is a gross head given in the numerical gross head minus the losses will give the net head so let me write that actually you have to be very careful when you are solving this you have the gross head okay so gross head this is your gross head i so so your net head equal to head minus your losses okay this is your net head always if it is not given in the numerical you have to calculate it and substitute that as a gross so net head in your uh, that is energy available with the fluid so if i substitute everything do a little bit of cross multiplication and also 10 to 10 power of 6 divided by 9810 into 0.8 into 500 i am getting 2.54 meter cube per second so this is the discharge what i am getting okay this is the first one the so second one so what is your specific speed so specific speed formula we know so specific speed n s p or n s t is given by n root p divided by h to the power of 5 by 4 okay so you have to be very careful here the power what you are substituting the power value should be in kilowatts the power value should be in kilowatts otherwise you will end up with a difficult so you have to p should be 10 into 10 to the power of 3 you have to it has to be in kilowatts so the specific speed they given it as 10 okay is equal to n divided by 10 into 10 to the power of 3 so this should be in let me write that this should be in kilowatts divided by your head that is 500 to the power of 5 by 4 or 1.25 so from this i am getting the value of n is equal to so i am getting around 200 and 36.4 rpm so i got the discharge as 2.54 meter cube per second i got the n as 236.4 rpm now what is your cv coefficient of velocity of the jet actually what is it actually if you go back and look into your fluid mechanics the coefficient of the velocity of the jet is given by c velocity of the That is actual velocity. If you look at C V is nothing but V actual by V theoretical. What is V actual? C V actual. What is V theoretical? It is root two G H. So from fluid mechanics, this is from fluid mechanics. So now, what is your V actual? It is your V one. So V one is equal to C V into root two G H. So they are given CV as 0.98, so it is 0.98 into 2 into 9.81 into net head. You have to be very careful. The head should be always net head. So V1 is equal to, or your absolute velocity V1 is equal to, I am getting around 97.06 meters per second. This is the value of your V1. Now, so this is your velocity of the jet now i need to find the velocity of the blade or your peripheral velocity how to find that so i know the speed ratio so speed ratio phi is equal to u by v1 or u is equal to phi into v1 but they are given phi as 0.46 so your u is equal to 0.46 
into 97.06 and I am getting my U as 44.6 meters per second. Okay, so this is the value of your U. So let's try to calculate other things. The first thing. So I need to calculate the first one is your I need to calculate the diameter of the jet. So to do that, I know the value of discharge Q is equal to N into pi t e square by 4 into your V1. Okay, I know the value of discharge which is 2.54 is equal to what is the N actually? It's the number of jets, it is 1 pi into d square by 4, d is the unknown number and what is the value of V1? It is 97.06. 97.06. If I substitute everything, I am getting my D as 0.18 meters or 180 mm. So then how to calculate the, uh, the wheel diameter? So wheel diameter that is U is equal to pi into D into N by 60 or your D is equal to 60 into U divided by pi into n. So if I substitute everything, it is 60 into u is 44.6 divided by pi into your n is 236.4. I am getting my d as 3.6 meters. So both the values which I am supposed to calculate, I got it. So the same problem, so what you people can do is, so same problem, you take it as a homework, so try it as an exercise. Try with n is equal to 2, that is number of jets is equal to 2, then n is equal to 3 and n is equal to 4, don't go beyond 4. Or if you want you can go with even numbers also, 2, 4, 6, 8, whatever it means. Some 3 values of n, try to calculate D and capital D. And also, if possible, try to find the ratio of d by d also, to just to verify, that's it. As an homework, you can do this. Same problem with n is equal to 2, n is equal to 3, or n is equal to 4, n is equal to 6, n is equal to 8. So try this, this particular problem as an homework. Okay, fine. So let's go to the uh, next set of problems. Okay, fine. So the second problem is very similar to your first problem. Let me take the third problem. Okay. See the gross edge available at a project site is <clears throat> 350 meters of water. The penstock pipe is estimated to be 60 meter long. The pipe friction factor is which is, which is called as EF, which is 0 0.007. The total pipe losses have to be limited to 4% of the gross height. The expected power from the project is 2000 kilowatts, 2600 kilowatts. The turbine speed is 600 rpm. Calculate the required flow rate that is discharge in meter cube per second. The pipeline diameter, okay, that is uh, uh, diameter of the pipe, we call it as a DP or whatever it is. The diameter of the jet which is small d, then the rotor diameter or the wheel diameter which is capital D. The speed ratio is once again 0.46. The nozzle velocity coefficient is 0.985 and the overall efficiency is 0.92. So this is the third problem. So it's a bit lengthy and we'll take up this particular problem. We'll try to solve it. Okay. Okay, fine. This is the problem. Let's try to uh, write the data what is uh, given in the numerical so solution so data so what is given in the problem statement is it is a gross head. let me write that as h suffix g which is 350 meters so the penstock 
pipe is estimated to be 60 meter long that is length of the pipe let me call it as l sub xp which is 60 meters and the friction factor f is equal to 0 0.0007 and head loss due to friction is 4% of your gross head okay that means if suppose your gross head is 100 meters your uh, head loss due to friction is 4% of that particular thing that's the meaning of it then the power is p is 2600 kilowatts or 2.6 megawatts then the speed is 600 rpm then the speed ratio phi is equal to 0.46 then they have the the nozzle velocity coefficient or whatever it may once again cv which is 0.985 and the overall efficiency as 0.92 this is what they are given now what we are supposed to find let me find it to find one by one the first thing is i need to find the discharge the second one is the diameter of the pipe we call it as a dp the third one is your diameter of the jet small d the fourth one is your wheel diameter that is called as capital d okay let's try to solve one upon one by one okay net head available or net head h is equal to your hg minus losses what is losses here four percent of hg that is hg minus four percent of your hg which is equal to hg minus four by hundred into you see that is the meaning of it that means it is equal to 350 minus four by hundred into 350 so 4 percent of that particular thing is roughly around 14 okay so i am getting my net head as 336 meters this is my net head available net head available is 336 meters now let us try to solve one of one by one what is your overall efficiency the overall efficiency the overall efficiency is given by the power developed divided by the energy that is supplied omega qh once again i have been telling you that h should be your net head so what is your overall efficiency given the numerical it is 0.92 so this is 0.92 is equal to your power is 2600 kilowatts substitute that divided by omega is once again 9810 which is assumed into q into head is just now we calculated which is 336 so if i substitute everything and do the calculation so which is 2600 10 to the power of 3 divided by 9810 into 0 0.92 into 336 i am getting around 0 0.86 86 meter cube per second okay then if we have to calculate hf that means i need to calculate diameter of the pipe if i want to calculate the diameter of the pipe so based on the frictional losses i can find it so what is your hf so hf we know so the head loss due to friction we know that equal to four percent of your hg or hf is equal to four by hundred into 350 which is equal to 14 meters so now as the fluid is flowing through a pipe so hf is also given by maybe if you go back to your fluid mechanics so we have a maybe we have two formulas one is Chess's formula and darcy's formula okay so one of the formula i'm going to use so 4 fl v square by 2 gd you hope you remember that head loss to friction in a pipe hf is given by 4 f l v square by 2 g d where l is the length of the pipe d is the diameter of so this comes from your fluid mechanics i am going to use this particular formula here in this particular for the respect to the pen stock and try to calculate your h 
uh, your diameter of the pipe and also what is your discharge see discharge is nothing but your a into v so that means area of the pipe into velocity of the pipe which is also equal to area of the jet into the say velocity of the jet velo area of the velo into velocity of the jet now if i want to find the velocity of the fluid in the pipe is given by discharge divided by your area of the pipe which is i can write it as q divided by pi into dp square by 4 or i can write this velocity of the pipe is equal to 4 q by pi into dp square where dp is the diameter of the pipe i can write it so now i am going to use this particular thing and try to find the your diameter by using this formula this particular formula what i have there you have studied in your fluid mechanics and substitute for velocity of the pipe as this is 4 q by pi dp square and try to find the diameter of the pipe which is given data so hf is equal to so therefore hf is equal to 4 into l that is the length of the pipe 4 fn so 4 f lp we call it a length of the pipe into velocity of the pipe velocity of the fluid in the pipe vp square divided by 2 into g into diameter of the pipe so i am going to substitute for vp from this 4 as 4 q by pi dp square i am going to substitute like that so dp square i will substitute with that so this is equal to hf is equal to 4 into fl p divided by 2 g dp or i can write this as that is 4 into q divided by pi into dp square okay this is actually whole square this is actually whole square or i can write 4 square into d q square divided by pi square into dp whole square so whatever the way you want you can write it now let us try to substitute each and everything so hf they are given it as 14 so this is 4 into f is 0.007 so length of the pipe is given as 60 divided by 2 into 9.81 into diameter of pipe as dp into 4 into 0.86 which is the discharge divided by pi into dp square whole square so from this so i need to calculate my dp so you have to do a little bit of cross multiplication 4 into 0.007 into 60 into uh, 4 into 0.84 square into 0.86 whole square divided by 2 into 9.81 okay here what i'm going to get dp here i'm going to get dp square whole square so dp 5 so everything if i try to solve dp for a 5 i have to take the fifth root of it what are i going to get actually so from that actually i need to calculate diameter of i am getting around 0.59 meters so the diameter of the pipe is found to be 0.59 meters this is how you have to find your to your the first thing what you are supposed to find is the diameter of the pipe which is found to be 0.59 meters so the next thing you are supposed to find is your diameter of the jet to find that let us go with a similar fashion how you can so we are supposed to calculate the the speed so you know the discharge from that i need to get the your correspondence v1 you have to get the v1 i know i don't know the value of velocity so i need to get that velocity then i have to calculate your diameter to do that let's take the specific speed so what is your specific speed your specific speed is given by uh n root p by h4 of 5 by 4 so i can calculate the specific speed if it is suppose they ask you to uh, find the specific speed of it i can find that or what is your q q is equal to see discharge see discharge is given by your discharge q is given by the number of jets into 5d square by 4 that is your area of the jet into your velocity of the jet 
which is v1. We are so that they have not given anything. So I'm going to assume n is equal to as a single check. I will take an assumption. How to what is your v1? V1 is equal to C V into root 2G H. So C V they are given it as 0.985 and H is 336. So that is 2 into 9.81 into 336. I am going to get uh, V1 as roughly around 80 meters per second. Okay. Now substitute this value in the K, Q actually. So what is the value of Q? It is 0.86. Your N is 1 pi into d square by 4 into 80. I can calculate the diameter of jet is 0 0.116 meters. 0.116 meters. Now I need to calculate the diameter of the wheel. So to do that, I need to calculate the u value. So they are given the speed ratio as 0.46. So I can go that and I can calculate. So phi is equal to u by v1 or your u is equal to phi into v1 that is 0.46 into v1 that is u is equal to 0.46 into 80. So I am going to end up with u is equal to 36.6 meters per second. So also your peripheral speed u is given by pi into your wheel diameter n divided by 60. So let me substitute everything. So it is u is equal to 36.6 is equal to pi into d I do not know which I have to calculate. What is the speed? So speed value so it is given as 600 rpm. So 600 rpm is given in the numerical. Just substitute that value of n 600 divided by 60. So I am going to get my d as 1.18 meters or roughly 1.2 meters. So this is how you are supposed to calculate the unknown parameters what is given in the numerical.